Well, good morning, everyone. Happy Thursday morning to you. Hope your week has gone really, really well. I just appreciate you being with me so very, very much in our study of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Well, I'm only going to take a couple more videos to discuss the motif of suffering that Paul introduced, martyrdom that Paul introduced in 1 Corinthians 15, 29 and following when he said, well, if the dead ones are not raised, what shall they do who are being baptized on the behalf of the dead ones? Paul is introducing, you know, this concept here of baptism for the dead, resurrection is all tied together. They're not, in, they're not separable motifs. And then he says, and in addition to the question, what shall they do who are baptized for the dead ones if the dead ones are not raised? He says, and why do we stand in danger every hour? I affirm by the boasting in you, in you, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord, I die daily. He's in danger daily. Then he says, if after the manner of men, I have fought with the beast at Ephesus, what advantage does it do me if the dead are not rise, uh, raised, in other words? Let us eat and drink, tomorrow we die. A, a quote, as I've noted, from Isaiah 22, a context of hopelessness. So this motif of suffering is extremely, extremely important. And we must keep it within the context of the suffering of the apostles. Remember what Paul said? God has set forth us, the apostles, last of all of men, of men condemned to die. Now, <clears throat> Paul's language there, <clears throat> 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 4, verse 9, is taken from the Roman world and what was known as a Roman triumph. When a, when a general, a king or whatever, Roman went out, and he went to war and he won, he would bring the captives that he had back into Rome and they would have a great big parade. And beginning with the very first of the captives, they would have, you know, the slaves, the poorest, etc. And then they would go up in importance until at the very, very last of the parade, you would have the captured princes. You would have ultimately the kings. And what they would do with them, depending on their mood that day, <clears throat> they would take every tenth person up to the Capitoline Hill and toss them over a bluff and they would fall hundreds of feet to their death. And remember, here is Paul using that very imagery. And he's saying, we the apostles are the last. We're the last in the, in the chain of martyrs. Again, not in, not in the span of time, endlessly, but rather in the filling up of the measure of the suffering of Christ that Paul said, I rejoice in my sufferings for you, and I fill up in my flesh what is lacking in the sufferings of Christ. We, the apostles, have been set forth last of all. Now watch, Peter agreed with this. In 1 Peter, Peter is writing to the diaspora. And by the way, I'm almost done filming my DVD series in a thematic study of 1 Peter. Be watching for that. Peter says... <clears throat> <clears throat> Beloved, 1 Peter chapter 5 verse or, I'm sorry, 1 Peter 4 verse 12. Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial. The proper translation is is among you. It's not in the future tense. It is in the present active. Do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial which is is to try you, which is trying you, as though some strange thing happened to you. But rejoice to the extent Watch this, that you may be partakers of the sufferings of Christ. That when, watch this, when His glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding glory. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you. For the Spirit of glory and God rests upon you. On their part He is blasphemed, but on your part 
He is glorified. <clears throat> By the way, this is temple imagery. He is saying that the diaspora, as they are suffering for Christ, have the Shekinah glory of God resting on them as the temple of God that he had talked about in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 4 and 5. Now, that pretty well means it's not a physical temple, doesn't it? Anyway, he continues, Let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, and an evildo evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. Yet if any man suffers as a Christian, let him glorify God in this behalf. Now watch. For the time has come. For, that's a connective particle. For the time has come for the judgment to begin at the house of God. Wait a minute. What judgment? Well, he uses what's known as the onophoric article, which refers to the previous discussion of judgment. Well, what is the previous discussion of judgment? It is the, verse 5, Christ was ready, Greek word hitoimos, meaning temporally ready and morally prepared, ready to judge the living and the dead. Wait a minute. The judgment of the living and the dead is the resurrection of 1 Corinthians 15. Here is Peter writing about the suffering. He's an apostle. He's suffering in the suffering of Christ just like Paul was experiencing the suffering of Christ. The apostles, i.e. Peter and Paul included, were set forth by Christ as the last to die in filling up the measure of the eschatological suffering. Oh, and by the way, notice in 1 Peter Chapter 5, verse 8, Be sober, be vigilant, for your adversary the devil walks around seeking whom he may devour. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same suffering, what suffering? The sufferings that they were enduring at that present time are being experienced. Well, the word experience there is not the happiest translation in the word, uh, in the world. It is epitaleo, and it means being filled up. Here is Peter with his audience, filling up the measure of sin. And by the way, he assured them in 1 Peter chapter 1, 5 and following, they would only have to suffer for a little while. Oh, what would happen in a little while? Well, he says the glory of Christ would be revealed. And he says the time for the judgment and the living of the dead had arrived, just like Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. They were suffering... He was an apostle. The apostles were filling up the measure of sin. And he wrote to the Corinthians and said, Brethren, not all of us will die before the resurrection. So Paul and Peter agreed in their doctrine of the suffering of Christ, in filling up the measure of the suffering of Christ, and the fact that that their vindication and their glory. Here once again, we have the shame versus glory motif, and it was coming in a very little while. That means the resurrection of 1 Corinthians 15, in the discussion of which Paul introduced the doctrine of martyrdom. That meant that resurrection was coming before all of that generation passed away. Don't forget, if you want an extensive discussion of martyrdom and resurrection, get my book, The Resurrection of Daniel 12, Fulfilled or Future. Go to my website, eschatology.org or bibleprophecy.com. Order the book and include a note that says you saw the offer on YouTube or Facebook, and I'll refund your shipping. That will save you $5. Well, hey, thank you again so very, very much for joining me for Morning Musings. You have a fantastic week, weekend, Lord willing, we'll see you on Monday.